Hi, I'm Joanne and welcome back to Crafting with Confidence. As you can see, it's a beautiful spring day on my deck and today I want to share with you something exciting which these are called jelly rolls. Jelly rolls are rolls of pre-cut fabric. A typical size is like this and it will have 42 strips of fabric that are two and a half inches wide. And when you buy one of these, everything's all, all done for you already. You don't have to do any cutting, you don't have to do any pressing, anything like that. So that's what's great about a jelly roll. And one this size with 42 strips would make a really nice lap quilt. Here's another beautiful one with 42 with blue and yellow. Today, I'm going to make something with this jelly roll, which has 20 strips and they're beautiful purple colors. So I'm going to show you how to make a nice little quilt for a little girl in your life. The first thing I'll do is unroll this little jelly roll and lay out all the strips. It's a bit like discovering treasure as you can never guess exactly what's going to be in the roll. I did decide after all to press each strip so it would be prepped for sewing and I can see I have a really interesting mix of polka dots, owls, fun geometric patterns and mandalas. Lovely! Next I arranged the strips into five groups of four strips each, varying how I ordered them, making sure each group included some purple, some pink and some grey. And I sewed these sets of four together, resulting in long sections like this. On the wrong side of each section, I pressed all the seams in one direction, and then I pressed them the same way on the right side. After that, it was time to cut each set of four into generous eight and a half inch strips so that they would form perfect squares for the quilt I had in mind. Hi, just a little side note while I'm making this video about the violet quilt. Um, I haven't been very busy on crafting with confidence over the last five weeks because it was my retirement month in June and I was very busy wrapping up my 33 year teaching career and then having various events to attend. So now that I'm all done, I'm back at it and I look forward to sharing this video with you really soon and getting back on track with regular Crafting with Confidence videos. Getting back to our quilt project, I've now cut 28 and a half inch squares from the five strips and have arranged them in an alternating pattern which I will then join together with these two and a half by eight and a half inch purple strips, resulting in five rows that look like this. And once those five rows are created, I'll join each set of rows together with a longer purple strip, leading to this pattern of 20 squares. Unlike other quilts that I've sewed recently, which all followed patterns, for this quilt I'm just making my color decisions and sewing decisions as I go. I like how this purple sashing draws the other colors together, so next I'm going to sew a wider purple sash around the whole quilt. And indeed this 3 inch outside border really seems to make the inside color stand out. Now that the quilt top is complete, I'm going to prepare the backing. As I usually do, I've sewn together two large pieces of soft purple flannel, have pressed open the seam, and laid it out on the carpet. Here is the quilt sandwich with the flannel layer right side down on the bottom, a slightly smaller batting layer in the middle, and the quilt top on the top. After making sure it's all smooth, it's time to pin all three layers together in preparation for quilting. I like to use these slightly bent quilting pins to do this, and I'm choosing to pin all along the purple sashing, being sure to smooth it out after each pin, and later in the middle squares, so it ends up looking like this. 
My machine quilting plan is to sew along the outside edge of each darker purple border, and after that, I'll sew diagonally across the inside squares. Here goes! You may be wondering during these beautiful summer times when it's so green and lush everywhere, why would anyone want to be quilting? Well, what I find is that all this greenery and all the beauty in the summer is actually an inspiration for quilting and it creates a nice balance in one's life during these beautiful months. By the way, if you have some ideas of what you'd like to see me try out on Crafting with Confidence, please just write your suggestions in the comment box below. The machine quilting takes some significant time and patience as you often need to stop and move the bulk of your fabric along, especially in the section between your needle and the machine. Sometimes I'll listen to podcasts or ebooks while I'm doing this to ensure I'm not rushing. At times the sewing is easier, as you see here, or more difficult like you see here with all that bunching. I think the machine quilting took me about three hours in total. And when that was done, I carefully cut off the extra backing and batting so the edges of the quilt were nice and even. For binding the quilt, I cut six two and a half inch width of fabric strips, sewed them together end to end into one long strip, and then pressed these in half lengthwise, leaving an angled finished edge on one end. I then pinned the binding to the edge of the project with the folded side facing inwards, leaving several inches unpinned at the top end so I could overlap the binding ends later. I've now sewn most of the binding on and will show how to create an easy metered corner. First I'll continue my one quarter inch seam until I'm one quarter inch from the corner. Then I'll back stitch a few stitches and we'll clip the thread. After pivoting the project, I'll fold the binding away from myself at a 45 degree angle and then towards myself, creating a 90 degree fold across the top. I'll start stitching again one quarter inch from the corner, making sure to reinforce with some back stitches, and then I'll continue sewing, tucking the unfinished end of the binding into the angled finished end and stitching over all the layers. Finally, I get to hand stitch on the binding, one of my favorite parts of quilting as I know I'll soon get to see the finished project. The back side of one metered corner looks like this, and you can see the right side folds into a nice 45 degree corner like this. And when the weather turns lousy, I can just sit back and enjoy my hand stitching. Here's the finished quilt, which I'm going to call Violet. Thanks so much for joining me to create this small jelly roll quilt. If you enjoyed it, please press like and join me again soon at Crafting with Confidence.